Put a business proposal to the House, please. Uh, thank you, Kian Corla. That is outlined in the revised report of the Business Committee and notwithstanding anything in standing orders or in the ordinary routine of business as contained in Schedule 3 of standing orders and unless the Dáil shall otherwise order, the following arrangements shall apply in relation to the sittings of the Dáil today and tomorrow. Leaders' questions shall not be taken today. There shall be no order of business or questions on policy or legislation today. Oral parliamentary questions to the Taoiseach shall not be taken. Topical issues, private members' business and Thursday evening business pursuant to Standing Order 1592 shall not be taken. The sequence of business shall be as outlined in the revised report of the Business Committee. The motion re ministerial rota for parliamentary questions shall be taken without debate and any division claimed thereon shall be taken immediately. Any division claimed on the proceedings on the motion we proposed approval by Dáil Éireann of a proposal for a regulation of the European Parliament and of the Council on enhancing police cooperation in relation to the crimes of migrant smuggling and trafficking in human beings shall be taken immediately and those proceedings shall, if not previously concluded, be brought to a conclusion after 57 minutes and the following arrangements shall apply here too. The order of speaking and allocation of time shall be as follows. Opening speech by a minister or minister of state, 10 minutes. Speech by representatives of Sinn Féin, 10 minutes. Speeches by representatives of the Labour Party, Social Democrats, People Before Profit Solidarity, the Regional Group, the Rural Independent Group and the Independent Group, five minutes per party or group. Speeches by non-aligned members, two minutes. And a speech and response by the minister, five minutes. And members may share time. Questions to the Minister for Finance pursuant to Standing Order 46.1 shall be taken today and the questions to the Minister for Public Expenditure, NDP Delivery and Reform that would have been taken tomorrow shall be taken on the 23rd of April 2024 without any change to the allocation of priority questions to either Minister and not otherwise affecting the current sequence of Ministers as ordered by the House or ROTA for priority questions. save as otherwise ordered by the House. The proceedings on second stage of the Future Ireland Fund and Infrastructure, Climate and Nature Fund Bill 2024 shall, if not previously concluded, be interrupted and stand adjourned today, either at 8.30pm or for four hours and five minutes, whichever is the later, and on the adjournment or conclusion of the bill as appropriate. The Dáil shall adjourn until 10am tomorrow. The Dáil shall adjourn tomorrow on the, on the conclusion of the statements to mark the 20th anniversary of the introduction of the smoking ban, which shall not exceed two hours and 27 minutes, and the following arrangements shall apply here too. The arrangements for the statements, not including the ministerial response, shall be in accordance with the arrangements agreed by the Order of the Dáil on the 30th of July 2020 for 135 minutes and the resolution of the Dáil of the 20th of September 2023, providing for two minutes for non-aligned members. Following the statements, a minister or minister of state shall be called upon to make a statement in reply which shall not exceed 10 minutes and members may share time. Thank you. Um, minister, could I just ask you to clarify, is the commencement time tomorrow 10.30 rather than 10 a.m.? Uh, I've 10.30 here, yes. Yeah, so it's 10.30, yeah. yeah. Okay, is that agreed? Agreed. That agreed. Deputy Mary Lou MacDonald. Uh, Ciarán Corla, yesterday the, the, the last words spoken by the Taoiseach were, let's get to work. Th those were his direct work, words. Uh, we, we come here today, it's his first day on the job, and he is a no-show. He's Oslor. Um, we have a housing crisis. We have today 570 people on hospital trolleys. Uh, across the state. We had 600 yesterday. We have families struggling just to get by counting every euro. We have communities that feel entirely unsafe. We have a lot of work to do. The government have a lot of questions to answer, and yet the Taoiseach hasn't shown up. This is wholly unacceptable, uh, Count Corla, and we do not accept the proposition. Simon Harris, uh, you waxed lyrical yesterday about the incoming Taoiseach. Uh, apparently he was going to do in 10 months uh, what she failed to do in 13 years. It was all about moving mountains and getting straight to work. And today he has not shown up. That is an absolute disgrace. Here, 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 here.
to just express disappointment that we're not having leaders' questions today. I have here the, uh, report, the original report of the Business Committee for this week, and there was a very extensive schedule uh, of business to be conducted to, over today and tomorrow originally. We've had two weeks of recess, there's been plenty of time to prepare for this. This House is only now sitting at two o'clock on a Wednesday, when we should normally be sitting all day on a Wednesday from the morning. And it's simply unacceptable that we have business not ordered properly and what looks, if I may say, somewhat like made up business over the next two days when there is so much important work to be done. And indeed, the new Taoiseach outlined a very ambitious programme of his own promises and commitments over the next barely, bare 11 months. We should be starting more quickly. We should be starting today. I don't, we don't anticipate the Taoiseach will be in a position to take leaders' questions tomorrow, as is the European Council on. So it'll be next week before the incoming Taoiseach takes leaders' questions. And again, we just want to object to that. Councillor Murphy. Yeah, um, I, I think it starts, as you mean, to go on. I hope it's not, this is not going to be the way we, we are going to continue uh, with the business. The last time I looked, the Constitution provided that the doll decides on the business of this Parliament. The government are telling us what the business is today without consultation. We have a business committee that has become a facade. Uh, when we had, for example, this is all dictated by government, and uh, the Taoiseach, when he was talking yesterday, talked about, you know, reaching across the floor uh, in relation to a more collaborative approach. When we had a minority government, I've got to say there was a lot achieved because there wasn't this we own the agenda kind of uh, approach. Um, and uh, there, was an, there was an awful lot of things achieved by that. This is, this is not the way to start with a new Taoiseach, with a new re regime. This is the business of the doll, not the business of the government exclusively. And that has to stop. Um, because we, we, we we're rightly uh, saying that we're, you know, you know, we had no input into this. Uh, and we shouldn't be excluded in, the, in this way. And, I, you know, I really would want the business committee to look at this very seriously, whether or not there is a point to the business committee if we're going to be just dictated to and told this is how things are going to be. We have the numbers, so just you know, leave it to us. We know best. I just think it's a very bad way to treat the parliament, and it's dictated by government. And this is a farce. We're a Gobo territory, I think, to see this empty chair here today. Where's the tarnished? I mean, the business of this week is shambles. Is shambles. You got a, a severe dressing down from the people in the referenda that you hadn't listened. You're not listening to us now in the business committee or the members of this house. It's an absolute insult to democracy the way this business has been treated this week. I didn't get to the meeting the, two weeks ago, my Deputy Collins did into my stead, but there was a, a full agenda uh, packed, and the government decided just, as a point, just to change it all to suit themselves for a coronation and a show. And all the promises yesterday, he was going moving the mountains, and he's not even here today. It's an absolute insult, I said, to the democratically elected members here, and more importantly, to the people of this country. With the situation regarding the, the, the fodder crisis and the weather out there, and a hundred other problems, a hundred of them, and for everybody, and this going on, it's a pure shambolic. And I, I tell you what, it, it doesn't all go well for this uh, new Taoiseach and this uh, cobbled together government. We had a kind of state of the nation uh, um, and turbo drive address from Minister Ryan yesterday, what he, what he wasn't going to do to the people. My God, I think you've lost the plot completely. And I think the people know that too, and are waiting for you. Toshi Fanaut in St. Fair, they're waiting in the grass for you, and you'll get your answer because this is an absolute insult to democracy, to all of us but more importantly to the Dean and the Hearn. Maybe you look at the Goods Cabot from when we're going home. I think it is a, a disgrace and an insult, but it's actually probably the way things are going to go, and that's fair enough, and, and because the business committee is a joke, and it's a waste of time, I believe, because the government doesn't have to pay any attention to it. So I'm, I'm glad they're being actually honourable now and actually not paying any attention to the business committee and going ahead and doing what they want, because that's what they set, set up to do anyway. And, and so for that reason, I would oppose the order of business, because I think it's, it's, it's wrong uh, here, and um, hopefully we won't run, continue on with the uh, 
fake business committee where the government fakes the, the idea of the consultation with the, with the opposition. And you can, you can say what you want in relation to that, Cancola and, the, and that there, but that is actually what happens. The government, the government dictates the business then the business committee. When it suits the government and they put under pressure and the doll here, they say the business committee decides it. And unfortunately, all of us in the opposition go along with that to make it look like it's, it's important and the business committee means something when it actually doesn't mean anything at all. Um, if I just could make a couple of comments in respect of the business committee, because uh, I have the responsibility of chairing that, and I have had the experience uh, before that of being a, a whip, opposition whip in the uh, ancient, previous regimes. <laughs> and uh, the truth of the matter is, business committee is far from perfect, but it has worked pretty effectively. I take Deputy Catherine Murphy's point; it worked far more effectively in the last stall because of the exigencies of the situation that it works now. But I would say for the Chief Whip, uh, Minister Hildegard Nocton, that she is the best whip I have seen in my years here. And she, she continuously takes on board points that are raised by people on the opposition and tries to work them into the business programme. So it is not the case that the business committee is a charade. It's not. Uh, Pardon? In relation to this here, I think it's, it is. It, absolutely. I, I, um, I think our, I, all of our I, whips, I, all of our whips represent our groupings and parties. I am talking about government whip. Well, you didn't say that. Government whip. I'm glad to your clarification. Government whip. What? No comment to make on anybody else. Good, bad, or indifferent. But, but, but the the whip has tried to take on board yes. from the government perspective the matters that have been raised. Can yes. I, can I just ask then in that spirit? Because whatever about the, the business committee, and there's clearly a problem with the business committee it needs to be addressed. I, I'm not raising the business committee. I want to know where's the Taoiseach. Here, he here. said yesterday he was getting straight to work, he was moving mountains, there was nothing, no challenge too great. And we are here today, we've shown up to do our job. We are here, we've shown in for work. Where is the Taoiseach? Right. He ought to be here, he ought to be here taking questions and dealing with the issues that matter to the people because with the greatest of respect, the business committee is not top of the list. Housing is. The hospital crisis is, the cost of living crisis, the fodder crisis. And we have a right to expect that the Taoiseach, he's now in post, we've had two weeks of a recess, he's had plenty of time to prepare himself, and he isn't here. To me, as, as an elected member of this uh, House, that is entirely unacceptable. And I think shows again the utter contempt of this failed government for us, and indeed for the people that we represent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, Deputy. I, 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 I certainly take that business that's before us is the important matter. I am simply trying to clarify in respect on the business committee. On the business committee, and I do take it that is not the important issue no. that's before us. But it is, as you set out, uh, Deputy Macdonald. Minister, please. Yeah, thank you, Ken Corla. And um, just to say that. The Taoiseach is not available to take leaders' questions today because he is speaking with the UK Prime Minister. He also has um, calls with the Northern Ireland First Minister, the Deputy First Minister, and also the President of Ukraine today. Tomorrow he's in Brussels as well as Warsaw, um, and he will be back to take uh, please, leaders' please. questions next week. And just in relation to please the business... Please let the Minister answer. In relation to the Business Committee, um, I have endeavoured and I will continue to endeavour to work with my colleagues across the House in relation to the scheduling of business. We in government have to set the, the agenda, the, the, the legislation, but we have always, and I have, and I will continue to do so, to listen to your suggestions around other statements or whatever you might want to discuss uh, into the future. And I look forward to that meeting on Thursday morning again. But for today, the Taoiseach um, yeah. is not One available. Point of clarification. What? This has been happening. This has been happening, and we understand those things have to be done, phone calls, etc. But where's the tarnished? I mean, when I was coming here first, it was always either a teacher or a tarnished yeah, we on that. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. and that's the way it yeah, was. Yeah. Okay. This I'm is totally disrespect for the house. Fine. I think we should go over to the Wax Museum and get a model man and put him in there. I'm putting the questions. The question that's not to, to be the question is that the business proposal put forward by the government chief would be agreed to. So, okay. Is that agreed? On a point of clarification, is the government's position the Taoiseach is not here present at his work with us because he had to make three phone calls? 
Can, can I just clarify that? You enunciate, you enunciate three people. Or four. Four phone calls. That's not Three acceptable. Three That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. I don't, I don't, look, I don't think we can get involved in discussions about how many telephone calls well, somebody that's is the, making. That's we what the government are offering. That's what the government are offering. We have, have, we have, we have important parliamentary business to do. Exactly. We're the the should be against yeah, the proposal. Those in favour of the proposals are those against. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to catch straight you. Vote on it.